You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. Could could cancer be cured or no? You'd still <clears throat> be monitoring. It's just you'd still catch. We it still have. Dirt. You know, I'm going to give it another hundred years. Okay, hundred. Yeah, sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, but, but in the meantime, but by the time we can cure cancer, we'll be able to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Like maybe grow those wings. Yeah, we could grow those wings. Yes, yes by that. I like that yes. idea. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would say a hundred years, and we'll be able to eradi eradicate every cancer. Mm. Um, you know, epigenetics is going to take a while. Mm. It's incredibly complex it's on a massive know. scale. We need computers that can have incredible computing power to be able to deal with the complexities of epigenetic mm. signaling. If you, especially if you wanted to handle it like you do currently, your care of patients, which <clears> is so <throat> individual, and you know, understanding everything about yes. their Yes. Genetics, and I like yeah. to I like to use this analogy. Um, you know, the Brian Cox uses in his shows. Mm. Um, physicist, physicist Brian Cox. Yes, he was talking about DNA, and I, I really like this analogy. Um, and so, uh, you know, I like to tell people, you know, genes typically have, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of base pairs in them. And um, you know, I'm sure you've heard this many times yourself. I've I've told you this and uh, tell everyone in our team this on a <laughs> regular basis. So genes have um, hundreds of thousands of base pairs. Each base pair has a possibility of having four different mutations. So there's four different base pairs, and so at each site um, you can have four different mutations. So when you get a piece of DNA that's about 150 base pairs long, you you would multiply. Uh, four by the power of 150. And that gives you a number that is significantly higher than all of the atoms based on hydrogen in the known universe. So the possibility of different permutations and combinations of mutations in just 150 base pairs, which is a fraction of a gene, is higher than all of the atoms in the known universe. So, so the, the complexity is right. horrendous. So there's lo ridiculous. lots that can go wrong. There's lots it's that can go wrong. It's understandable now yes. why we have these mutations in so course, many different yes. ways, including cancer. And why cancer is unique in every person. Mm -hmm. But also, yes, we're, we're a ways away from the technology to be able to assess that for everybody and, and make it. Well, we useful. can we can identify tumor DNA sequencing allows us to identify just about any mutation. Mm. That's not the problem. It's just that. There's so many different combinations. How do these individual mutations affect each other? Mm, right, and the interplay is important it's when it, huge. when we talk about treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if people have two or three different mutations, they can be working together or against, against each, other, each other, and you can yeah. use that information mm -hmm. to your advantage if you're yes. taking a look at them as a whole, as opposed to just one mutation. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Yes. Thank yes. you. And that's why we really recommend, if it's possible, for you genetic panels as opposed to single gene testing. Totally. Yeah, yeah. because there's just yeah. too much information, again, that gets left on the table. Yes. And when your life is on the line or the life of someone you love, yes. you just don't want to leave anything to chance. Yes. So the more information you gather, the better. Yeah, um, so we spend a lot of time on what's known as um, inactivating mutations and um, uh, resistance mutations. So not just um, looking at the gene that is targeting you know, the, or not targeting a specific mutation, but looking at how other mutations affect that particular drug mm -hmm. and create resistance to that drug. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times, you know, we won't just focus on the mutations that are obvious and that we can target. We'll say, well, what else is there that could potentially, you know, prevent this drug from working properly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and that's it. Very important. It, it is important, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you say, because time and sometimes money are are being spent on these things. Exactly, and again, a lot the, of money. The side effects that people will experience on different, right. you know, those right. will be affected right. by those concerns as well. So this brings back to the point you just mentioned. Uh, you know, a lot of sequencing is based on spot mutations that that have a drug that will target them, and the rationale there is, um, you know, oh, you don't need to look for mutations that we don't have drugs for. Well, yes, you do. Because you need to know if they're going to affect um, the mutations you're targeting. That's right. So if your oncologist says, yes, I'll get you some genetic testing, we'll test for this and that gene, or just this one, uh, get more. Get the broadest panel get you the, can. Yes. More information is always better. Yes. And uh, one, of, one of the panels that we really like, for just to give you a frame of reference, has about 350 genes that they test for right now. They're always adding more 
Um, but uh, you know that's uh, that's um, uh, a very good FDA approved test. And as you were saying, there are some panels out there that uh, cover thousands of genes. Mm -hmm. Those are still kind of in uh, research and development, not yet um, FDA approved. I think. Well, you know that's a that's a funny one. FDA approval is not required for genetics. Um, wow. You know, Foundation One is FDA approved, um, but you know literally just about any of the genetic you know all the all of the tumor dna sequencing is basically illumina based next gen sequencing those are the and machines it, yeah and you know the companies that are supplying foundation one supply all the other companies so mm. everyone's everyone's using the same using technology, the same technology that's so just as good yeah so whether it's fda approved or not sure you know it's nice to be able to say it's fda approved mm. um and i think that is important definitely when you're dealing with drugs but with tests you know there's some great tests mm. that are not yet FDA approved mm. and may never be. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, that's right. just the, because they may not need to be. They may not need to be, and mm. and um, by the time they go through the FDA approval, and this is more common, um, they'll be obsolete. <laughs> Things so, are moving so fast. They it's are. True. Yeah, it's a true. lot of companies are not even bothering with patenting right now. They're yeah. they're putting out their tests. They're getting their data from the tests. They're making sure it works through clinical trials. And then they're using the tests mm -hmm. and they're not bothering with going through all of the regulatory processes because they know by the time they actually get that done, that test is going to be useless. Mm -hmm. Well, and also, again, uh, uh, because of the technology that's being used, a lot of these tests are self-validating. Like you, you, exactly. You kind of, there's that's a, a new technology, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Yes, you can so it's not like you're wondering if they work and you're not checking. You know they work. You can tell. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.